go. All right. Hello, everybody. We've got beautiful Marsha here. I'm so excited. And we're just going to dive into coaching for her. Okay. So if you were to kind of encapsulate your biggest one or two struggles into a sentence, how would you do that? Um, probably not having regular meal times. Um, my schedule's crazy, so I don't, um, I don't have anything in the fridgey that I can just grab for a good snack. Um, you know, I have good intentions, but when I go to an event, it's the whole salami, cheese, crackers. Come on, we all have seen it. It's all, it's at every event and you're hungry and so then you're filling up on food that doesn't make you feel good after you've eaten it and that's probably part of it and i'm i need a routine honestly mm -hmm. i don't have a routine mm -hmm. so. yeah. okay so you know you need a routine and do you notice that when um you have a more of a routine or has it been such a while that it's had you've had a routine you notice even when you have a routine, sometimes it can be challenging to not grab all the crackers, etc. No, no, because I don't crave them. I don't crave any of that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, right? It's your body's getting what it needs. So, yeah. no. Yeah. Um, and I don't feel good after I eat that way, quite honestly. I mean, um, I got home from Mexico on Saturday night. And so Sunday, I um, really didn't have any. I didn't have my car, number one, and number two, I didn't have any food in the refrigerator, so I'm looking in my cupboard at my, uh, uh, I use Evolve products, and um, because it's, it's food, and so anyway, um, I pretty much ate that way until Thursday night, just bars and shakes, and, and letting myself get hungry as you said that you need to hear your stomach <laughs> Good. To really growl you Good. know and I'm like you know and I do believe that we don't need to eat every two or three hours or whatever but I really heard you when you said I thought you know I don't even I'm probably not even hungry when I'm shoving you know especially when I'm driving somebody gets out of my car and I'm like Oh, that's done. And I'll go for a handful of nuts that, you know, I have in my car. I don't carry nuts in my car anymore. Um, I think that, you know, if you ate a handful, that'd be great, but I eat the whole bag. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So exactly. learn, learning when to stop is also it. But anyway, so back to feeling better. I did really honestly, be, I still feel better, but, um, you know, I didn't eat well last night. I just, you know, it was like I showed up, I had cheese, I had crackers, I had, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. when I'd much rather been eating a bowl of Brussels sprouts, you know, or something, some vegetables, some salad, something, right? So. Okay. So let's yeah. dive in here. So the way that the methods that I use to do coaching is um, we always start by looking at the autopilot default thoughts that our brain is telling us. Okay because we have 95 to 99% of our brain on autopilot and it's wired that way. It doesn't mean anything's wrong, but that's running the show most of the time. And so what I'm listening for when I hear somebody, when I'm coaching them is little thoughts that are coming up that are causing the actions. Okay. So how the anatomy of the brain works is, have you heard this before? No, Fascinating. my cat, my cat is driving me nuts. She's trying to get my attention. She's okay. scratching on a bag. She's trying to climb on my lap. It's my cat. Hello, cat. Thanks for the laughs. So what I'm looking for, and I, I like to be visual, like I think about the thoughts. The thoughts happen up here, and most of them on are, are on autopilot. And what happens when we think a thought, even if it's auto, uh, like autopilot or subconscious or semi-conscious, what happens essentially the anatomy is it will send a chemical signal through the body that occurs to us as an emotion. So what I heard you say in one of the big um, pieces here, which I think can resonate for a lot of people is my schedule is crazy. Right. And I want you to look at that for a minute. And you see these other things that your brain's like, well, I just need a routine. Da, 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 da. And there's some validity to that, but what I want you to do is back up to my schedule is crazy. And when you say that, 
I want you to tell me how it makes you feel in your body. Say it right now and like in your mind or you can even say it out loud. I don't care. My schedule's crazy. How does it feel when you say that thought? Think that thought. It feels um, kind of, and almost hopeless. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. like, right. Where do you yeah. feel that? I want you to kind of be present to oh. it. You're hopeless. Where does, where does that chemical sensation kind of land in your body, that hopelessness? <laughs> Um, probably in, it probably all go. So for me, I, I carry everything right above my, in my chest, in my upper chest, all my tension. A lot of people go for the gut, mm -hmm. but, um, that's where it hits me. That's where most things hits me. Yeah. Okay. I want you to just kind of <laughs> nudge and take a look at that. Your I have to. I have to get up and take you with me to take care of this cat who is 16. There's food in her dish, but it's not the right food. So you talk and I will do this. Sorry. I'll let, no, it's okay. I'll let you, I'll let you take care of her. And then I'll just edit this part out. Not a big deal. Cause I want to be present. It's okay. I mean, she is hilarious and there really is food in her dish. Just a second. I have to put you down. Not that I'm really putting you down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm not kidding you. Oh, my cat, my cat, I love my cat. <laughs> she just has bad timing, bad timing. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Okay, thank you. Oh my goodness. That's hilarious. She's fine now, I think. All right. Oh, goodness okay. me. No worries. No worries. Okay. So <laughs> when you think about like the struggle with food, one of the first things that your brain went to and defaulted to was my schedule is crazy. It was time. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. the time, right? Okay. Yeah. And, and I want you to get present to, you told me that my schedule is crazy, makes you feel hopeless in your body and you kind of feel it up here, right? Right. I want you to tell me what you do when you're feeling that hopeless feeling because your brain's telling you that your, your um, schedule is crazy. What do you do when you're feeling hopeless? Well, usually when I'm feeling, when I'm feeling hopeless like that, it's when I'm wishing I had, um, had made the time or had the time to sit down and really enjoy some delicious food. So the hopelessness, I think, comes from not having made myself, oh, oh, it's an aha moment, a priority. Yeah, that's what this one usually bottles down to. Thank you for catching that so quickly, nicely, right? But I want you to sit with it for just a minute, okay? That's really kind of the underlying thought that we don't realize is on autopilot. And that's really what ha helps us to have change long term. It's like, oh, I got to put me consciously as priority. First. Yeah. Sit with this for just a minute. When you feel hopeless, one of the things you do is you don't put yourself as priority, right? What else do you do or not do when you're feeling hopeless? Um, I probably because I'm in my head a lot anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I, I'm going to say I don't, I don't beat myself up because I'm long past that. That okay. took a lot of work, mm -hmm. Good, but I can make excuses very easily, yeah. you know, for why I didn't take the time or why I didn't make the time yeah. for me. You know, I have, I can avoid, I can avoid that very easily. Okay. So right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for lo looking at that and owning that. Good. Sit with it for a little bit longer. Is there anything else you do or don't do? Look at your whole day. Yeah. I just, I'm just running. I'm running and I'm not, it's not a conscious uh, plan. There is no conscious plan other than I need to get X, Y, Z done to get out of here to go drive right, right. so I, it's like I'm just constantly catching up I, or I'm not I'm you know I'm just I'm maybe one step ahead of the game but mm -hmm. that's about it 
Yeah. Exactly. This is so good, Marcia. So many people have this because we're all human. And this is one of the most common default thoughts. My schedule is mm -hmm. crazy. I wish I had the time. My schedule is crazy. And so if you notice, mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask you one more question here is, do you notice anything about how you show up or don't show up when you're feeling that hopeless feeling? Anything else? Um, you know, it's funny. I probably do. So when I show up outside of my home or out in public or whatever, I am super authentic mm -hmm. and I probably, sh I show up more for other people than I do for myself. So, yeah. um, and I'm, I'm constantly working on that. Honestly, the food thing is the final piece right now for me, right. you know? Right. And so something that you do when you're feeling that hopeless is you don't make a meal plan. You don't right. yourself. And that's exactly how it connects here. Mm -hmm. So when we think it's about the food, it's actually about the thoughts that are running. I'd like to think about it like um, background computer software. The type of coaching that I do is called causal coaching, meaning we're, I'm not just going to say, okay, go do this, go do this, because we, it's like slapping a, um, oh, here's a Band-Aid, go do sure. it, and then willpower runs out. So this is why digging okay. deep into like the deep pieces of this, you already were able to have an aha, right? Oh, so the result of all those actions just creates the self The pounds. It creates the pounds and it creates more <laughs> confirmation that see my schedule is crazy because if you think back, right. I don't put myself as a priority. I don't, but I, I make excuses. I void, I run, mm -hmm. there's no conscious plan. There's no, you know, there's just mm -hmm. barely catching up. That is the manifestation of a, uh, yep. uh, of a crazy schedule. Right. And so I want you to really think about this, like software, the thought happens, the hopelessness goes through the body. The feeling is the reason we do or don't do everything in our lives. Mm -hmm. The feeling of hopelessness has us, has you do those things. And then it creates the result of, see, my schedule was crazy. I can't do it. I gained the weight. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to start to be able to compassionately uncover these thoughts there because part of our brain, we have this, do you know what the reticular activating system is? It's part of our brain that scans the data, the input, the visual, the audio, the sensory data that's coming in. And we have 11 bits of like data coming in all, uh, all the time throughout the day. And the way that its job is to scan for what to pay attention to. Its job is to scan, okay, there's so much data. What data do I, you know, weed out and what do I focus on and the way that it, fo that it focuses is by whatever thought is playing the most so if that thought my schedule is crazy mm -hmm. I wish I had the time oh my gosh my schedule is crazy you know what it's going to scan for mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. going to create the feeling of hopelessness because it feels <gasps> kind of frenetic right and then it's going to cause you to do these things and then it's going to create that result so that's what it's scanning for that's all it sees that's what it creates and then that's the result that it creates. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. You know, because I'll be honest, when I um, am in, you know, my, not that I don't all have good energy, I could have better energy. But when I'm, when I do have a plan, a food plan, and, you know, everything is in sync, my life is so much better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I under I get it. I get that. It's changing it. Yeah. It's right? making, making me, and, and you know, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm working on this all the time because I'm the, the nurturer, the caregiver, the, you know, I'm the one that wants to encourage everybody and, you know, yeah. which I won't always be, yeah. but I need to be me. I need to turn you that need around. To, you need to point, point you point, yeah. on the list too. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And so yeah. what we start to do from this point is understand kind of what's going on in the background. And then we start to say, okay, instead of hopeless, what do I want to create as a feeling on purpose? Tell me what you'd like to create instead. 
instead of creating kind of this underlying like mur you know it's kind of like a little murmur back in the background of hopelessness right mm -hmm. feeling do you want to create instead um what is a good word for uh like um oh my goodness i am having a hard time putting this into words so uh something to look forward to right so you it's like oh instead of like oh motivated? i don't have motivated yeah that's it motive the motivated mm -hmm. huh. yeah okay so if you want to or motivation i don't similar somewhere in that area hmm. yeah okay yeah. So right now we take a step back and we say, my schedule is crazy. I wish I had the time. That thought program is not serving you to feel motivated. No. At all. It's serving you to feel hopeless, right? So if we want to feel right. motivated. I mean, it's motivating me to get in the car and drive and go make some money, but it's not motivating me to make me feel good while I'm in the car to go make the money. You're, yeah. You're talking about two different things here. Yeah, exactly. We're talking food versus livelihood, et cetera, right? Sure. If you want to feel motivated about putting you as a priority, mm. making your meal plan, what do you need to start practicing thinking when that little, my crazy schedule is crazy starts to creep in? Push it to the side and make me first and just stop, stop and take time for me and forget the rest yeah. until I've taken time for me and then everything else will feel better and as I'm going along anyway it's true now yeah. let me ask you this on a scale of one to ten how much does that feel true and how much do you believe that oh ten definitely mm -hmm. how much I really do feel, believe that how much do you feel committed to you being able to do that Oh, eight. I'm probably at an eight. I mean, you know, I, I have to go grocery shopping. Yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's the list. What do I buy? What, you know, it's like going back to, you know, I, it's like, I don't even remember how to do that anymore. When I used to just, that was just common, you know, yeah. it was just a daily, well, this is just how you eat. This is just what you do. And now I have to go back and you know, reevaluate everything. Well, let me offer you something else that I just heard come out of your head. I don't know how to do this. How does that one feel? How does that thought feel? Yeah, it's kind of a bunch of baloney. I do know how to do it. Well, it doesn't feel good though, right? But when no, we it doesn't. No, if it's not true. It's yeah. not true. It does. It's negative. Yeah, it didn't feel good. No, I absolutely knew. Do know how? Right? I just have. I'm just not. So tell me that I do know how, and I'm learning to put myself as priority. Tell me how that thought feels. That feels great. Oh gosh, what a relief. Does it feel like relief or does it feel like motivation? Tell me the emotion. Yeah. Um, I'm not to the motivation point yet. Yeah. You know, and plus you have to remember, I drove until about three 30 this morning. So I'm, I'm tired you know, you're, and you're a champ and, doing this. And I just, and I just was on a call with my, with a medium and we talked about my, my, you know, deceased yeah. sister and my, you know, so, you know, my, my emotional being is a little, is, oh, is kind of, it's, there's some ebb and flow always with me anyway. Oh. But, um, what I want to do after this call is really just go to uh there's a vegan or uh, restaurant in on roosevelt and i can't the sun something and just really have a good something to eat yeah that i know is organic and clean and i don't have to think about it yeah so there's a reason you are feeling inspired to want to go eat that good meal now mm -hmm. the feeling that you just created by thinking i do know how Right. And learning to put myself as priority, it does sound like a little bit of motivation. It might be something else. Is it peace or calm or um, inspiration or what is the feeling? Well, you're very inspiring. You know, you may not know that, but I mean, 
I really don't know your story as well as I would like to. Um, but it's, it's authentic, you know, and it's taken some serious dedication, I'm sure, to make yourself a priority. So that's, that's the inspiration. Um, Thank you. Thank you. And I just know, I just want to be able to move better and feel better and my body, you know, not that I'm body shaming anyone that's heavy or whatever. It's got nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's being able to move gracefully in my own body. Yes. And so when, and this is what I'm going to invite you to do to take going forward, right? I don't coach people to like put a, an affirmation on my schedule's crazy. Oh, I'm just going to believe that it's not. That doesn't work. That's like putting a bandaid and kind of shoving it down. We actually mm -hmm. need to mm -hmm. understand what's going on in the background. And we just picked out a couple of for you. And then I invite you to start anytime your brain wants to say, I don't know how, or my schedule is crazy. I want you to start. Mm -hmm. And you may want to write this on a little piece of paper. I want you to write it down. I do know how. I'm learning to put myself as a priority. I do know how. And I'm learning to put myself as a priority. And when you get maybe a little, you know, hopeless again, turn that into a question. How mm -hmm. can I know how? Because my mm -hmm. And how can I learn to put myself as a priority today? And what's happening when we learn to understand the brain in this way and compassionately in this way, and by asking these compassionate questions and by practicing these thoughts, what we're actually doing is we are getting out of that survival autopilot program part of our brain and connecting to our prefrontal cortex, the most amazing problem solver on the planet. And here, this prefrontal cortex, when we ask our prefrontal cortex, yeah. knows how to solve the problem. It knows, right? And I love yeah. this question, okay, what would future Marcia, what would future, excuse me, future Marcia tell me right now? about learning to put myself as a priority. Mm -hmm. What would future Marcia She's, tell me right now? She would say it's about damn time. <laughs> yes, she would. Yes, she would. Did you uh, hear her? She said it like that, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's about damn time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You got it, sis. That feels really good to say that out loud, too, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to do it again. It's about damn time. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, sister. I love it. All right. So that's, that's your homework. Okay. I do know. Yes. How. I'm learning to put my I do know how. I do know how. Yourself yep. Times. All right. All right. I'm learning to make myself a priority. Mm -hmm.